わからないなんで俺が今頃母さあゲームセットはわ<笑>かるか投げ方を変えたんだよこれなら一からでしょう Greetings. It is I, the unshaven, unkempt beast titan himself, here to tell you about how great Chimchar is, and also about a couple other Pokemon that are in the、uh, Diamond Pearl Pokedex. Welcome to the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl in game tier list. What is an in game tier list? So, in an in game tier list, I'm going to be ranking all of these Pokemon based not on their aesthetics, not on their competitive viability, nothing except. How they help you get from your house to the Hall of Fame. So, Pokemon that rank highly on this list are going to be offensive. They move first, they knock out their opponent in one hit, and then they do that again and again and again until the game is over. That means that Pokemon that are defensive in nature, they might not be bad Pokemon, maybe they've got some utility, but they're generally going to rank lower on the list. I highly value Pokemon that are available. <laughs> that just means. Early in the game, you can catch one and then have it contribute to your quest throughout your whole playthrough. That means that a Pokemon that is like kind of mediocre that you get early in the game is going to place much, much higher than a Pokemon that's like, yeah, kind of good, but you don't actually get it until like the last gym. I want to be very, very clear this is a diamond and pearl tier list. I am not considering the platinum dex shakeup at all. The、Game Freak sort of realized that the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex is kind of poop. <laughs>、uh, as you can see right here in front of me, where is everyone? <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's nothing here. So, in Platinum, Game Freak made the unprecedented move of actually revamping the regional decks within the same gen remake. There's far more Pokemon available and Pokemon available at different times、uh, in Platinum compared to Diamond and Pearl. So, I think that requires an entirely different tier list. This is. Diamond and Pearl only, and if anybody in the comments says something like, well, actually, in Platinum, I'm gonna flip, and then I'm probably gonna like, write a comment saying, like, I'm sorry, this is a Diamond and Pearl only tier list. <laughs> what's new in Gen 4? Well, the big thing is what's called the physical special split. What is that? So, prior to Gen 4, whether a move was physical or special was determined entirely by its type. So, for example, all fighting moves were physical. And all fire moves were special. Now in Gen 4, that's no longer the case. A move's physical or special property is actually determined by the move. So, for example,、uh, fighting moves, they're mostly physical, but there's also Focus Blast, which is a fighting move that does damage based on your special attack stat. And for fire moves, you still have your special fire moves like Flamethrower, Fire Blast, but you also have Fire Punch. And Flare Blitz, which calculate damage based on your physical attack stats. What does this actually mean in regards to the tier list? So, there are certain Pokemon, like, say, Kingler, who have monstrous attack stats, like 130, that's massive. This is the claw, by the way.、Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, Kingler is a water type, and all the water moves were special. Why does that matter? So, there's a thing in Pokemon called Stab, which stands for same type attack bonus. And when you use a move that is the same type as one of your types, you get a 50% damage boost. That's great.、So、you pretty much always want to do that.、Uh, a super effective move is double damage. So, simply by using a move that shares your type, that's like half a super effective hit. That's crazy. And of course, it's multiplicative. So, it all stacks. Point is, you want to be using Stab moves. But Kingler couldn't use its crazy 130 attack. With water moves because all water moves are special. Now, you got Waterfall. You got Crab Hammer. You can destroy people with that attack stat if you're actually in the game, <laughs> which Kingler is not. So, <laughs> rip. In regards to this tier list, it basically means that the floor for how bad a Pokemon can be is a little higher because at least they can be bad with their better attacking stat. Just a quick note about trade evolutions. At this point in the year 2021, I'm just assuming you can get them. Not because you can trade with someone else who's playing on a DS, but because nobody is playing on a, on a DS, if, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'm not going to penalize Pokemon for requiring trade to evolve. But 
Uh, there is a limit to my generosity, as we'll see when we get to certain Pokemon. Let's talk a bit about what the tiers I've set up actually are. So at the very tippy top, we have the S tier. These Pokemon are the best of the best. If you're not using them... I, I don't know, man. I don't know why you're not using them. <laughs> it's, I'll put it that way. A tier. I think these Pokemon are above average. I highly recommend putting them on your team if you want to complete the game as efficiently as possible. B tier. These Pokemon are whatever. You can use them or not. I don't think they really help or hurt you. And I'll just take this time to say that uh, this is a children's video game. Uh, you can beat the game using absolutely anything. You can use objectively the worst Pokemon, mashing random buttons, and probably finish the game eventually. So this whole tier list is really just sort of an excuse to nerd out for what I'm assuming is going to be over an hour uh, over analyzing stuff that is, you know, pretty much irrelevant to <laughs> how the average player actually just <laughs> plays the game for fun. Imagine that. C tier, these Pokemon are kind of bad. <laughs> uh, if you're using these, I think you're making your team weaker overall. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't use them. They can still maybe have some niche uses. Then there's the C tier. In pretty much every generation, there's just this deluge of really mediocre water types that aren't quite bad enough to go in D, but they don't really belong in like C or B. And they're all basically interchangeable. I'm sick of having to like try and come up with things to say for each one i'm just putting them all into the c tier they have a home now and they're gonna have a home going forward because these water types they're never going away and under the c we've got d tier d for don't bother um these pokemon are actually just bad uh, for the most part they're like bad <laughs> uh there are going to be some like purely defensive pokemon that i feel just don't fit in to an in-game playthrough, and they're not necessarily like unusable, but just they take forever to actually do anything. And below D is a tier I forgot to add, so I'm gonna do that now. Uh, let's make it this nice orange. It is. Boop. Wait, what? Okay, that didn't work at all. <laughs> uh, there we go. Nope, just kidding. Uh, okay. There we go. Below D is the H, the honey tier. And I'll explain what that is when we get to our first honey tree Pokemon. Uh, let me just say uh, that uh, I don't like honey. And finally, we have the post game or basically untiered tier. These are all Pokemon that are only available after you actually become the champion, uh, at which point I'm no longer like ranking them. And I think I forgot uh, Heatran, but I mean, you wouldn't be able to rank him anyway. And you might notice there's a ton of Pokemon that are, like, just, like, they would be at home in the early game. A lot of Pokemon that actually got specific new evolutions in Gen 4, yet for whatever reason, they're not available during the in-game playthrough. Why is that? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, but I don't want to hear anybody going, like, Imported cheese, how could you forget about Gallade? Disliked, subbed, and then unsubbed. Calm down, buddy. Okay, I didn't forget. You just can't get them during the normal playthrough. Which sucks, I know, but it's just how it is. Go play Platinum. I don't even know why I'm making this tier list. Maybe to cash in on the trends, right? <laughs> and if you are upset at Gardevoir and Gallade's exclusion, and you feel like disliking, subbing, and then unsubbing, I would encourage you to do so. But don't do that unsub part. Tricks. Okay. I think that's about enough of a preamble. How about we start ranking some Pokemon? And I have these all here in, I believe, Sinnoh Dex order. So we're going to start with number one, Turtwig. Turtwig is the grass type starter, and I feel like it's difficult for starters to be less than S tier. I think Turtwig is, uh, hang on. Turtwig is not B. Let me just say that uh, I don't have enough USB slots to actually use my webcam, my mic, and my mouse. So, <laughs> I actually want to put Turtwig uh, in S. Uh, begrudgingly. I don't think it's, like, an incredible Pokemon, but it is very solid from start to finish. I think that's good enough for S. Uh, so, Turtwig is a grass type, which is kind of unfortunate. Grass is not the best typing, but it eventually gains a ground typing, and that means... Stab Earthquake. 
and you can't really go wrong with Stab Earthquake on a Pokemon that's available from the very start of the game. Like, hammer things with Stab Earthquake. You can also literally hammer them with Wood Hammer, which is another really strong 100 percent accurate move that Turtwig gets access to. Unfortunately, uh, it does deal recoil damage, but it's not the end of the world. It's just not ideal. I think Turtwig just, just barely earns its spot in S. Chimchar. Chimchar does not go in S. We need to add a new tier for it, above S. What color are we going to make it? I think we're going to make it, uh... Oh man, there's not that many colors. <laughs> Just make it white, I guess. And we're gonna name this tier Monkey. So Chimchar is monkey build. It's the best Pokemon in Diamond and Pearl. That's not even a discussion. The discussion is, is it the best in-game Pokemon in Pokemon history? And I think the answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, you could maybe make an argument that Gen 1 Nidoking does a little bit better overall, but Gen 1 is also, like, a clown fiesta, uh, and Nidoking's on top because of a bunch of, like, tricks. Monkey is honest. Monkey doesn't pull any sorts of shenanigans. Monkey is just straight up very, very good. Uh, it is fast. It is almost always going first. It has great attack and special attack, so that means whatever the opponent's weakness is, Monkey can hit it. Uh, that's also relevant because under the new EV system that was introduced in Generation 3, you're going to be getting random EVs in all your stats. Uh, and Chimchar can use the random EVs it gets in both its attack and special attack, so really nothing goes to waste. Uh, what really makes Chimchar, like, the monkey tier as opposed to just S, is its move pool and its versatility. Because you've got Firefighting Stab, an absolutely brutal combination, backed up by both Flare Blitz and Fire Blast. I think you have to use a Fire Blast TM, uh, but really powerful Fire type options, as well as Close Combat, which is the best Fighting type move, I believe, till this day. It's 120 base power, and the drawback is that it drops both your defenses, so it has no drawback. <laughs> it just has crazy stab options, and if the opponent can survive those, you also have Grass Knot to take care of rock, ground, and water types who are supposed to be your counter. Uh, you have Stone Edge, as you saw in the opening, as he destroyed the Scout Regimen, and I guess also enemy flying types. You can get Earthquake, I don't know why, even though he's so tiny, but apparently he can Earthquake. And then eventually in Platinum, which we're not talking about, but it gets even better. <laughs> uh, there is just no move that you want Chimchar to learn that it doesn't. <laughs> it is just perfect in that regard. I think it's hilarious that uh, Empoleon, which is the final evolution of Piplup, which I guess is like your counter, is slower than you and a steel type, which means that you beat it. <laughs> like, Chimchar is so strong that it literally beats up its counter. Hilarious. Uh, Chimchar is the best Pokemon in Diamond and Pearl, and I think it is also the best Pokemon in Pokemon overall, in terms of in-game performance. Uh, why did we ever think that becoming humans was an upgrade? We should all aspire to return to Monkey. And after heaping all of my praise on Chimchar, how much do I have left for Piplup? A fair amount. I think Piplup is also an S-tier Pokemon. I think it is overall a little bit better than Turtwig, just barely. So Piplup suffers a lot through the early game because up until about level 25, which is quite a ways in, uh, its best stab option is like Bubble. For some reason, it doesn't get Water Gun. And that's its biggest weakness because once it actually uh, gets some decent moves, especially Surf, uh, this thing really takes off. Uh, water Steel is phenomenal typing, incredibly good. Um, defensive, like Merit, it's not that important, but it is nice to just be able to resist a bunch of random attacks. Uh, Piplup is a water type, water type is very good, one of the best types in the game, and its special attack is also very good, it's actually the highest we've seen up to this point among the starters, so Charizard and Typhlosion both had 109, uh, Blaziken had 110, and Empoleon has 111, it just keeps going up by one, I, I don't know why, uh, it's like such an odd value, but it's a very good special attacker with like decent passive defense, and it's a starter. I think that's S. Next. Starly. 
Let's go through a quick history of the early game birds. Gen 1, you had Pidgey. Pretty much the definition of mediocre, outclassed from the moment it was available by Spearow, uh, who is also not great. Hoot Hoot in Gen 2, also pretty bad. Very mediocre overall, uh, but at least you can maybe hypnosis something if you're lucky. 40% mischance. Gen 3, we get Talo, who's actually pretty good, definitely a big step up, really, really fast, uh, and if you're able to leverage its guts ability, which is a bit tricky to manipulate, but if you can, it's actually pretty darn good. And finally, in Gen 4, we get to Starly, Staraptor, I said that out of order, Starly, Staravia, Staraptor, they all start with S. This is an S-tier Pokemon. I think it's actually better than Piplup and Sertwig. This thing is absolutely bonkers. Like, let's just side-by-side side the stats of Pidgeot and Staraptor. It's like a joke. They took a bunch of stats from areas that you don't care about, and they stuffed them into the single most important stats, speed and attack. And they also gave Staraptor a higher base stat total, just, just like to mock Pidgeot even further. This thing is crazy. From the moment you get it, it's dishing out, I mean like, okay damage. Uh, but then it evolves, it gets Intimidate, which is one of the best abilities in the game. So like, even though Staraptor has lower, lower defense than Pidgeot, it's actually physically bulkier because of Intimidate. <laughs> what a joke. Uh, the move pool is on point, you al almost always have a decent stab flying option available, and eventually you get Brave Bird, which is just gonna obliterate things. Unfortunately, it deals a bit of recoil, but I mean, you can take it. Uh, you get Stab Return, just like the most reliable option. Uh, but unfortunately, Brave Bird and Return, they both get walled by uh, Rock and Steel types. So, you're gonna have to switch to someone else. Just kidding! You get close combat! What? You don't even have hands! You don't need them! To dish out at the big damage with Staraptor. This thing is just phenomenal. And of course, it's available right at the start of the game. Like, as soon as you leave your house, basically, first patch of grass. That might not be true. It might be like second patch of grass, but like really early. Uh, and it's just. I don't really have much more positive things I can say about this thing. You should be using. Starly on your team. It's also really cute. Next. It's Bidoof. Probably the most memed about Gen 4 Pokemon. I mean, like, look at this face. How can you not meme about how derpy this is? Are. You. Ready. Bidoof is an S tier Pokemon. Now, this takes a bit of explaining, uh, and I think the explanation starts at the question, really, that this tier list is about. Why do you put Pokemon on your team? And the answer is to help you beat the game, which is not the same as to beat every enemy trainer. Gen 4, specifically Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, is where HM bloat really gets out of control. <laughs> right? There's eight HMs in this game. There's Cut. Rock Smash, Strength, uh, Surf, Waterfall, Fly, Defog, and Rock Climb. You think that's enough? <laughs> right? There's eight HMs. Remember, each Pokemon can only learn four moves, and you have six Pokemon. So, two-thirds of your team is going to be taken up by HM moves if you want to run all of them. And you do want to run as many as you can, because Diamond and Pearl is very heavy on just, like, Patches of terrain where you need HMs to progress, not just to get goodies, like to actually move forward. A large part of the game involves like traversing Mount Coronet, which requires a whole grab bag of HMs. You basically always want to have them on your team. And there is no better Pokemon to stuff full of HMs than the Bidoof line. Uh, the Bidoof line is available really early, and importantly, it's available like everywhere. If you're on some random route and you have like a team slot open, you just catch a Bidoof and just stuff it with HMs right there. Not to mention that in terms of combat, Bidoof is not the worst thing ever. Um, it's available really early. It evolves up to Beeburl at level 15, which is also early. At that point, its attack spikes up to, I think, low 80s, which isn't great, but I mean, for that point in the game, it's fine. The water normal stab combo is actually really good. Um, it's only resisted by Empoleon, and if your rival has Empoleon, that means you have monkeys, so you're probably fine to do whatever you want. <laughs> 
But let's be real, Beeborel is not on your team to fight. It's there to use HMs. And in that regard, it's the best HM slave in the game. Like, some people choose Turtwig, some people choose Monkey, some people choose Piplup, but everybody who has played Diamond and Pearl has a Beeborel on their team, right? Like, all LD... All Pokemon trainers are connected, right, by invisible paths that transcend time and space. We all have the shared memory of using a Beeborel. And how could I put a Pokemon that is on everybody's in-game team any lower than S? Right? Like, Beeborel bears the weight of all these terrible HM moves so that the rest of your team doesn't have to. Right? Beeborel being on your team, it makes the rest of your team better. And that takes HM05. I really hope HM05 is strength, <laughs> otherwise that joke does not work. Alright. So, so far, like, Pokemon are looking pretty strong in this gen. Up next, uh, Cricketot. And anytime I see this thing, the only thing I can think about is, I think a Dragon Ball Z line where I think it's Vegeta goes like, Guess what, Kakarot? <laughs> guess what, Kakarot? So guess what, Cricketot? You suck. Straight to D. This thing's terrible. <laughs> and the reason why it's in D instead of C, which is probably where it would be if it was like a normal early game bad bug, is that for whatever reason, Cricketod only learns Bide, which is like one of the worst moves in the game. It, it literally cannot do anything except get beat up and then hope to survive and deal some damage back. Terrible. And if you suffer through raising it up to a Cricketune, what do you get? Well, you get the best cry in the series, you know? Whoop! Ah, that was terrible. I, I tried my best. Um, best cry in the series, but, like, that doesn't matter in this tier list. D. Horrible. Shinx. Shinx is pretty good. Is it S good? You could definitely argue that, but I personally am going to put it in A. It's available early. Both of its abilities are good. You can get either Rivalry to give you a little bit of extra punch if the opponent is the same gender as you, or you can get Intimidate, which is just all around really good. It's always nice to just reduce enemy attack for free and make yourself a little bulkier. The, really, the reason why Shinx is not an S is because its move pool is just balls. It's bad. <laughs> uh, so it's got a really great attack stat and like a slightly disappointing special attack stat. It's not bad. It's a little bit on the slow side. I think 70 base speed, but that's still enough for pr most situations considering you're probably going to be a higher level than the opponent. It's just that what moves do you actually use? You get Crunch on the physical side, and then you can use either Thunder Fang or Thunderbolt as your electric option. Uh, if there was a stronger electric move, this would probably be S, or if it could learn, like, a fighting move somehow, it would probably be S. It's just really that you've got Crunch and electric move, and then just random normal moves, maybe. Its move pool is just a little bit too bad as a little advance up to S. In my opinion, you might think he's an S Pokemon, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. Abra. Abra's pretty good. I think it's A good. Uh, it does take a little bit of investment uh, because Abra itself obviously cannot attack unless you give it certain TMs. I'm not sure which ones you might have access to um, at the point you get Abra that would allow it to attack. But you only have to get it up to level 16, which doesn't take that long. It's not in the slow experience group like a uh, certain fish. Um, it's a pretty like simple investment. Once you get to Kadabra... This thing's amazing, right? It's super fast and super strong, which are the two most important qualities. And if you can manage to evolve it up to Alakazam, it gets even faster and even stronger. Uh, in terms of moves it can use, it's basically just going to be Psychic and Focus Blast and like maybe like a Hidden Power if you get lucky. Uh, but having like a really fast, really strong Psychic is, I think, A tier worthy. And right next to Abra, a slight investment Pokemon is Magikarp, a heavy investment Pokemon. So Magikarp, I debated for a long time whether to put it in A or S, and I think based on the arguments I just used for Abra, I think Magikarp actually goes in A and not S. With an asterisk. So Magikarp infamously useless, 
until you evolve it up to Gyarados, at which point it becomes unstoppable. And that is especially true here in Gen 4, where finally the full power of Magikarp is unlocked, because it can use that phenomenal 125 base attack with stab water moves, and also just has Intimidate as this like, extra icing. The issue, of course, is how do you actually get it to Gyarados? Now, level 20 is not very high, but Magikarp is in the slow experience group, so that means it takes more XP to level up Magikarp as opposed to, you know, some other Pokemon that's not in the slow experience group. And that's experience that could be going to some of your other teammates. I will say that I believe the investment is worth it if you are playing with either a Turtwig start, and especially if you're playing with a Chimchar start. In fact, I think if you start with Chimchar, Magikarp is actually an S-tier Pokemon. Um, but I think the average, like, result of Magikarp is in A, where you have to really invest, you know, carps. You know, the carps go up the waterfall, they become a dragon, eventually. And that's worth it. Uh, to me. But it might not be worth it to you. Which is why I think A is an okay tiering for our fishy boy. Badoo! Pretty much the best grass type in the game aside from Turtwig, but that's not saying much because grass types are kind of bad. I think Badoo is at home in B? It's available fairly early. Unfortunately, it's like a friendship evolution up to Roselia, which is pretty obnoxious, but you can technically get it just by like running around a lot. Uh, Roselia is okay. Roserade is actually really good. <laughs> um, if you could evolve up to Roserade earlier, I'd actually probably put this in A. Uh, but you can't. Uh, the Dawnstone? It might be the Shiny Stone, but I think it's the Dawnstone. The Dawnstone is, I believe, available on Iron Island, which is quite a ways into the game, that you're stuck with a Roselia. So I think B is a fine placement for it. Uh, you still have plenty of utility, even if you don't have the best attacking stats uh, until you reach Roserade, you can always, like, powder things, which is useful. Zubatto! Zubat is, I think, pretty good. I'm gonna put it in B. I'm gonna put a little bit above Badoo. So, when I say Zubat, I specifically mean Crobat, because Golbat sucks. Uh, but once you get it up to Crobat, if it loves you enough, uh, you get a super fast Pokemon. It moves first. And then what? <laughs> uh, so the issue with Crobat is that its move pool is just a bit lacking. It's not terrible. You have, like, Cross Poison. You can teach it Fly. If it learned Brave Bird by level up, I'd probably put it in A. But unfortunately, it's a egg move, so you're not going to get it. You can do a lot worse than Crobat for your in-game teams. I think it's at home in B. Geodude. Uh, I historically have favored Geodude quite highly, and uh, history repeats itself. I like Geodude a lot. I'm going to put in B. I think it's also better than Subat. Uh, Geodude, it's just uh, a very straightforward, strong physical attacker. You got Stab Earthquake, you got Stab Rock Moves, and you have the attack stat to back it up. Great. It's just a bit slow, uh, and... Well, that's about it, really. It's a bit slow, and it dies to bubble. So, you have to be a little bit careful. Alright. Onyx! It is a tradition that Onyx goes in the lowest possible tier. I hate Onyx. It's so bad. It, it just... 45 attack is so useless. And it has the sh same weakness as Geodude, where you know it dies to bubble, but it doesn't actually do anything when it's not dying to bubble. And I already hear people in the comments, like, adjusting their glasses, like, well, actually, below Cycling Road, you can encounter Wild Bronze Ore, which have a 5% chance of holding a Metal Coat. And remember, you said you are allowed in trade evolution, so if you trade your Onyx with a Metal Coat, it'll become a Steelix, not to mention that you can actually catch Steelix in the wild on Iron Island, unprecedented in the history of- it. Shut up! Okay, shut up! Onyx sucks. Steelix isn't much better, and it's way too much work to actually get it there, okay? Onyx goes in D. Onyx apologists get out of my channel and into my Discord. Uh, I have a Discord that I run with just, just, just a few people, but uh, everyone's real cool. Link in the description. Please hang out. There is an Onyx emote, so if you like Onyx, uh, you can uh, go ahead and spam that emote. And I'll battle you by spamming Charizard emotes. Even though I'm 4x weak to Onyx, I think Charizard still comes out on top. Cranidos. Diamond exclusive. 
Kranados does one thing, and one thing only, and that is hit things really, just disgustingly, illegally hard with physical attacks. And I think that's worth an A. Uh, it is just such an absurd powerhouse. I think Rampardos' attack stat is... Is it the highest in the game at this point? I think it's lower than, like, Deoxys' attacks, who's obviously not in this game. Uh, it's actually crazy. Its other stats are garbage, but I mean... High attack. That's worth a lot. Uh, you could, I think, maybe argue for this to go in B, just because it's such, like, a one-trick pony. Uh, and because a lot of its best moves aren't 100% accurate, so you might miss and then, you know, get knocked down. But I think that having just, like, a crazy powerful, like, wall breaker Pokemon does have its uses. I, I, and I think that use warrants an A-tier placement. Unlike Shieldon, the Pearl a counterpart to Kranidos, Shieldon is pretty darn bad. Darn starts with D, let's put him in the D tier. Uh, it's a defensive wall, and it's not even that good at it. <laughs> um, it's got really good defenses, but its HP sucks. And of course, being a Steel Rock type, uh, it's got crippling 4x weaknesses to both fighting and ground, uh, which is an issue because fighting and ground are both really strong offensive types. I think it's really ironic that if you were to ask just some random person, hey, uh, you just showed them, like, a type chart and said, hey, pick the most defensive combination. And if they knew nothing about Pokemon, they'd probably say Rock and Steel. Not knowing that it's, like, a terrible defensive combination. Uh, yeah, Shield On, it just doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about his signature move, Metal Burst, because it's a cool move. It's basically a combination of Mirror Coat and Counter. Counter returns any physical damage you take. Uh, for double damage. Miracle does the same, but for special. Metal Burst, you don't have to pr predict whether it's physical or special. It'll return both, but it only returns 1.5. And the thing is that because Shieldon's defenses are good and its HP is bad, it's not actually going to take that much damage, which means that it's not going to return that much damage. The reason why Wobbuffet works is because it has high HP and crap defense, which means it takes a bunch of damage and then knocks out the opponent. For Bastiodon, you're just going to get chipped down while hopefully chipping down the opponent slightly faster. Awful. D tier. Machop. Not buff yet. Will be buff soon. Machop is pretty no-nonsense good. Yeah. Uh, it's just got a really high attack stat, and it can hit things with that really high attack stat. It's got two good abilities. It's got Guts, uh, which when you're status, it gives you more attack. Or it's got the very fun ability, No Guard, where... Its moves all have 100% accuracy, which means you can use a no-miss dynamic punch to just destroy things. Just keep in mind that No Guard does cut both ways. So that means that enemy moves will also always hit, which includes any one-hit KO moves that might be lurking out there. So you just gotta be a little bit careful with that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that Machop is at home in A. It's just powerful from the moment you get it uh, till uh, it actually gets all four arms. It's pretty good. Psyduck. I think this will be our first addition to C. <laughs> it's a mediocre water type. With nothing really exceptional about it. Except that it's a water type. Which is worth not being in D, basically. Congratulations, Psyduck. Alright. So, up to this point, I I'm basically just using the first form of each Pokemon, just because I don't want the list to be too cluttered. But for Pokemon that have branching evolutions, like, say, Burmy, which can evolve into either Mothum or Wormadam, I just put their final forms. And these are going to be the first Pokemon that actually go in the Honey tier, because they are Honey Tree Pokemon. Now, if you don't remember what Honey Trees are, or uh, if you purge them from your memory, please forgive me as I remind you about how awful they were. So basically, there were certain trees where you could slather honey on them, and then six hours later, you'd encounter a Wurmple. And then six hours later, you could do that again. <laughs> they were such a waste of time. Basically, certain Pokemon could only appear on honey trees. Most of them had, like, a pretty bad encounter rate. Most of the time, you just encounter a Wurmple. Uh, so all of those Pokemon, I'm just going to put in the honey tier, because basically, you're not going to be catching them. Uh, but I am going to talk about where they would be placed if you could encounter them outside of honey trees. So Burmy can evolve into Motham if it's a male, 
or one of three different Wormadam forms based on the terrain it's evolved on. So if it's evolved on like a grassy terrain, it'll evolve into the Grass Cloak, which is Grass Bug. If it's on like ground, like earthy terrain, like sand, it'll evolve into the Sand Cloak Wormadam, which is Ground and Bug. And if it's evolved in, t in s like indoors, um, it'll become the Trash Cloak of Wormadam, which is Steel and Bug. And Trash is right. All three Wormadam forms and Motham are all absolutely horrible. They would be in D uh, if they weren't in the Honey tier. Uh, they're all just useless is the word to use. They, they don't do anything. Wormadam is defensive, so it just takes hits and then dies without really doing anything. And Motham is a little bit better. It's just like a really bad early game bug flying type. Eventually it gets Quiver Dance, but not in this gen. So in Gen 4 in DPP, bad. Moving on. Beautifly, one of the final forms of Wurmple, a Pokemon you can get in Eterna Forest, and also in every honey tree in Sinnoh. <laughs> um, but because you can actually just get it in the wild, it doesn't go in the honey tier. Uh, but Beautifly is pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to put it in C. Uh, sort of the whole point of these early game bugs is that they evolve early at like level 10. You get a little bit of power spike to help you through the early game, uh, and then you just discard them later. Uh, but the thing is, uh, your starters are absurd, so you don't need this thing. Uh, and, like, you get this before Gardenia. Like, is the Gardenia a difficult gym leader? She's a grass-type gym leader. You don't need Beautifly. Uh, and you also don't need Dustox, so I'm just going to put them together. I think Dustox is a little bit better, because uh, you can do, like, some extra shenanigans, but neither of them are really good. Um, they're, like, short-term Pokemon. Uh, and even in the short term, they're not great. I think C is where they belong. Combi. As you might imagine, the Honeycomb Pokemon is tied to the Honey Tree mechanic, which means uh, it goes in the Honey tier. Uh, all male Combi, which is, I believe, 89% of Combi. It's a lot. Um, they're completely useless because they can never evolve. Uh, once you slather honey on a tree and, like, encounter the Pokemon, the encounter is set, like the Pokemon that you encounter. So if you encounter a Combi, no matter how many times you reset, it will always be a Combi. But gender and, like, shininess and those, like, softer traits are not locked. So if you encounter a male Combi, you can just keep resetting until you get a female Combi, which can evolve into Vespiquin, who would probably be in C tier. It's just... Uh, it's a bug flying type with actually like okay stats uh, and some neat tricks so you can use attack order Which is a pretty good uh, bug type move you can heal yourself with defend order and like stall kind of decently But overall like not great and it's a honey tree Pokemon so in the H tier it goes Pachirisu uh, one of the laziest Pokemon names ever they just didn't translate it um, Puts puts just means clap Bisu is squirrel so it's a clapping squirrel phenomenal creativity guys It's whatever um, I'm gonna put it top of C. It's an electric type. Electric types are pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately, because it is a Pikachu clone, it's fated to just have garbage stats and be unable to evolve. So from the moment you catch Pachirisu till the end of the game, it's never going to get any stronger. And it's not that strong to begin with. But it's at least an electric type. So enjoy your place in C, Pachirisu. I'm, I'm clapping for you. Buizel. It's a water type. And it's a good one at that. Uh, we're going to go in A. Uh, I'm actually going to put this slightly ahead of Magikarp. Gyarados is, I think, just like objectively better than Buizel and Floatzel, but you don't start with Gyarados, right? Uh, you have to baby it from Magikarp, whereas Buizel, from the moment you get it, it's good to go. It's really fast. It's got okay attack, and it's a water type. That's an A-tier Pokemon. Cherubi goes in the Honey tier. Absolutely horrifying Pokemon because this uh, little smaller cherry that's dangling off the main one looks like it's peacefully sleeping. It's actually being sapped of its nutrients and absorbed by the main body. Horrifying. Uh, evolves into Cherim? I think? Like, I can't even remember. This Pokemon's so bad. But uh, evolves into Cherim eventually. Uh, who's a Pokemon that I'd probably put in D? <laughs> it's mostly useless. Its main utility is that in double battles, when it's sunny, it buffs its teammate. When is it going to be sunny in a double battle in your in-game playthrough? Pretty much never. Shellos, and eventually Gastrodon. Oh, Water Ground is a phenomenal typing, one of the best in the game, and it's basically invincible, because its only weakness is grass, and grass types suck. 
so I think Shalos is good enough to be in B. I don't think I'd quite put it in A because it is on the slower side with like kind of mediocre offenses. But just being a water ground type is worth quite a lot. I think we'll put it in B. Heracross! Incredible stats. Theoretically available really early from a honey tree. A honey tree. Uh-oh. And I said theoretically because you are not catching this thing. It's like a 1% encounter. Uh, ugh, it goes in the honey tier. If you could catch it, it would probably be S because it is absurdly powerful. Uh, you can mega horn things, hit things with crazy fighting moves. You got 125 base attack. Awesome. Too bad you're never catching one, right? Apom. Also available from honey trees. H tier. But unlike Heracross, who cares if you can catch this or not? Because this is not that great. It would probably be in C. It's like a mediocre normal type with like some okay tricks up its sleeve. Okay enough to not be in D, basically. Drifloon. Really bizarre catching condition. Uh, it's at the Valley Windworks, but not when you first get there. You have to come back after, I think, defeating Cyrus or like progressing some like much later story event. Uh, and it's only available on Friday for whatever reason. In my Gen 2 tier list, I didn't penalize Lapras for only being available on Friday. So I don't think I can like fairly penalize Drifloon for being only available on Friday. Actually, I can. I should have penalized Lapras, and I will be penalizing Drifloon. I think Drifloon goes in D, just because of how difficult it is to catch, and because once you get it, it's, like, not incredible or anything. It's, like, a defensive Pokemon. Defensively leaning, uh, without, like, great offensive options to take advantage of. I think, unfortunately, it goes in D. Um, if you could just catch it as, like, a normal Pokemon when you first get to Valley Windworks, I'd probably put it in, like, mid-C, just uh, for the extra availability. Baneri, early game normal type Pokemon, mediocre stats, is that a D? Not quite, I think it at least goes in C. There's really nothing that Baneri and eventually Lopunny specialize in, it's like kinda fast, so I guess it'll like maybe move first, and then what, its offenses are pretty mediocre overall. I can't really think of a reason why I would recommend you would use this on your team, but it's not so awful that I'd put it in D. So it goes in C. Ghastly. I think Ghastly is an A tier Pokemon. Uh, it eventually evolves into Gengar, which is a really fast special sweeper, which now has access to stab moves that are special. A huge upgrade. In fact, I'd probably put this in S were it not for the fact that it kind of suffers until it gets access to Shadow Ball. Before then, you're mostly like nightshading things which is kind of annoying. Uh, you're almost never going to be 1 KOing anything. At, you're actually usually going to be like 2 or 3 KOing, which is really obnoxious. Uh, but once you get the ball rolling with Shadow Ball, uh, this thing is crazy. <laughs> really, really good. Misdrivus. I believe Pearl exclusive, while Murkrow is Diamond exclusive. You catch both of these in Eterna Forest. I'm going to put them both in B. Their base forms are like kind of weak. Uh, but eventually when you get the Dusk Stone, I believe, from Galactic Kite Out, uh, they can evolve into Miss Magius and Honchkrow, both of whom are really powerful. Um, I think Miss Magius is a little bit better in its base form, whereas Honchkrow is a little bit better in its evolved form. But both of them are solid throughout the entire game. Uh, yeah, I think B is a good place for them. Glamyow. You'd think this would be in like an early game normal type, but it's not. It's like mid to late game, and its stats don't really reflect that. Like, what? <laughs> uh, it's not so bad that I think it goes in D, but I, I think it's, uh... It's basically better than Baneri, but you get it later, so I think it's a little bit lower. It's just a normal type that's eventually quite fast and has like okay attack. Uh, but, like, it takes a bit of work to get there, and it's available, like, later in the game for some reason. I don't know, because it's uh, analog in Diamond. Stunky is available much earlier. What? Goldine, Goldine, Goldine. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? See, there. This thing is in every game. I don't know why. I don't know who is it out there that's excited about... They just can't wait. 
till the moment in the game where they can finally add Goldeen and Seeking to their team. Goldeen has always been bad, as far as I can tell, until it gets like a Mega Evolution to like Sea Emperor. It's always going to be bad. But it's a water type, so it doesn't go in D. Have fun in the sea. Barboach. It's a water ground type. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, it's available like quite a ways into the game, and like once it evolves up all the way, its stats are still like kind of mediocre. I think it actually, bec on the merits of its ground typing, does not belong in the C tier. So we're gonna put it in the C tier. Uh, because eventually you can start rocking things with Surf and Stab Earthquake, which are both like pretty good. Or more likely Waterfall and Stab Earthquake. Sure. Chingling! Pretty cute. Eventually evolves into Chimico, which is like... Okay? Is it a D? I don't think it's a D. I think it goes in C. It's just like... Underwhelming from start to finish. But not so bad that I'd say don't bother. We'll put it in D. Stunky. So I mentioned earlier that uh, it's, this is the analog to Glymeow, and for some reason, Stunky is available much earlier. I think you can catch it right under Cycling Road. It's whatever. It's not great, uh, but it is decent and available for a lot of the game. So I think I'll maybe put it at like the very bottom of B, I think is where it'll go. There's no real niche it has, like, you're never clamoring to add Stunky and Skuntank to your team, but, like, it's there, and Poison Dark is a pretty good type. It's only got one weakness, like the Earthquake. Sure. Meditite. This thing's pretty good. Uh, it's got pure power, which means that it hits really, really hard. The issue is, what does it hit really, really hard with? Because its level up move pool is pretty barren. Um... You're gonna have to use some TMs to get this thing usable moves, but if you do that, it's pretty good. Uh, it's available decently early. I think I'm gonna put it in top of B. I think seems like an okay place for it. It's good. Bronzor and Bronzong. I think this is the first Pokemon going in D that is there, despite me thinking it's actually a good Pokemon. So it goes in D. And that's because it's just a physical and special wall. It walls things, and that's mainly all it can do. It's good at walling things. Uh, if you're doing a different sort of run, like maybe like a Nuzlocke, where it's very like important to keep everyone alive, Bronzor and Bronzong are really good. Uh, but for this run that I'm doing, where you just kind of want to finish the game at like a decent pace, you don't want to be trying to wall things with Bronzong, even though it walls things quite well. And also has Hypnosis, which is actually good in Diamond and Pearl, because instead of uh, 60 accuracy, it's 70, and then they nerfed it again in Platinum, back down to 60. <laughs> so enjoy 70% accuracy Hypnosis while you can, if you choose to use this thing, uh, which I unfortunately would not recommend. Oh, and just a note about uh, Bronzong. Um, I used to just think its design was dumb, but it's based off of these bells here in Japan that are said to bring the rain. Just a little note. Ponyta! If you watch the intro, uh, you already know what tier this goes in. Uh, it's going in B. At the very bottom. So I don't think Ponyta is that good, but unfortunately, if you want to use a fire type and you didn't pick Monkey, this is literally your only option. I don't know why there are so few fire types. I assume it's because Sinnoh is based off of the Hokkaido region of Japan, which is cold. Like, I get it, okay? I, I taught English for three years and basically discount Sinnoh. It's cold, okay? There aren't many fire types. I get it. How about more than two, okay? <laughs> why are there so few fire types? And, like, if you're gonna limit the fire types so much, why did you then have an Elite Four member that uses fire types? But most of his team isn't even fire! <laughs> like, what is this? Ah. Oh. Back to Ponyta itself, it's, like, not great. Its move pool is really shallow, it eventually gets, like, okay fire moves. What really kills it is that it evolves into Rapidash really late, like, early 40s. And until then, it's stuck as Ponyta, who's like pitifully weak. Really weak. It, really, the only reason why it's not in C is because it's a fire type. 
and there are so few fire type options. Also, why is Rapidash so slow? Uh, to be clear, 105 base speed is not slow, right? It's actually decently fast. Um, fast enough to outspeed most things you're going to be facing in the game, but like, why isn't it like 110 or like 120? This thing is named Rapidash. And before you're like, well, actually, it's a localization thing. Its Japanese name doesn't allude to its speed. Its Japanese name is Gallop, literally Gallop. So yeah, it's also supposed to be fast. If they didn't want it to be fast, maybe they would have named it like Canter or like Trot. Horse vocab. This thing should be faster. Bonsley. Known for crying fake tears. Will it cry because I've placed it in D? No, because I'm placing it in C. It's not very good. <laughs> uh, it's available like mid-game-ish. You have to evolve it up to Sudowodo, and Sudowodo is like, whatever. It's got a decent attack stat and a good defense stat, and it's slow. It's a C. Mime Jr. Also a C. Uh, it's definitely better than Bonsley. I think it's going to be much higher up in C. It's sort of equivalent to Chingling. Uh, you get it later. Um, eventually evolves into Mr. Mime, who's like, okay, but you have to work to get it there. It's not really worth it. Let's see. Happeny and the Chansey line. It's a D. It's a good special wall. You don't want to wall things. D. Cleffa and the Clefable line. I think they'll go in B, but with a huge asterisk. So, these things have like okay stats and a phenomenal move pool. The issue is that to unlock that move pool, you need to stuff it with TMs. And those are TMs that could be going to your other teammates. So the opportunity cost for using Clefable to its full power is huge, and I personally wouldn't recommend it. But if you were to do so, I'd say you end up with about a B-tier Pokemon. Chatot. Bad. <laughs> bad. Is it D-tier bad? Almost. Uh... Yes? No, I think I, if I put Glammeow in C, I think I'll also put Chat on C. It's pretty bad. Uh, it's like a whatever normal flying type. Chatter is kind of cool because you get to like scream into your uh, DS if you're still playing on one and like turn it into an actual like move that plays back what you're screaming. That's kind of cool. Uh, is, is that worth being in B tier? Like, no, it's just got really bad stats. And Chatter has not yet been buffed. Chatter would eventually become. Like, a Confuse Ray that deals damage, which is actually quite good. But at this point, it just has a chance to Confuse, which is like, meh, whatever. Pichu. Congratulations, Pichu. You did it. You're finally, like, vaguely useful. So, we'll put Pichu in B. Like, here-ish. So, you can get Pichu, give it a Thunderstone, make it a Raichu. And it's like an okay electric type. Uh, remember how I mentioned being like kind of let down by Shinx's special attack stat? It's higher than Raichu's. But whatever, Pikachu, Raichu, they're electric types. Electric type is pretty good. And there's only three electric types in the game. There's like Shinx and the Pikachu line. And I guess like Pachirisu. But, like, Pachirisu is so bad that Volkner, the Electric-type gym leader, doesn't even use it. What's with this bogus Pokedex, man? Why is it so barren? <laughs> hoot Hoot. Bad. Bad. We're just gonna put it with, uh... With Chatot. It's, like, available not even early game this time. It's, like, mid-game. It's a Hoot Hoot. It's bad. Like, it's normal flying. You could maybe Hypnosis something, and that's about it. Let's see. Spirit Tomb. Uh, we're gonna put this in D. Not because it's necessarily a D tier Pokemon, I'd probably put it in C, it is defensive link, but because you're not catching this thing. It is so convoluted, you gotta like talk to this random black belt who gives you like an orb, which you gotta put in like the hallowed tower, which is not even a tower, it's like a well. 
I, I think it's supposed to be like a destroyed tower or whatever. And then you have to go to the underground and talk to 32 different people. Turns out it doesn't actually have to be 32 different people. If you have two DSs, you can do like a manipulation where one, like the cartridge you want to catch Spiritomb on, you just stay in the underground. And the other, like cartridge, that player like goes in and out of the underground and each time it counts as a different person. This is ridiculous, okay? You're not gonna do this just to get a spirit tomb. You're not catching it, it goes in D. Gibble. So eventually, it evolves into Garchomp, which would like be fighting with Monkey up there, but that's eventually. By the time you actually have access to Gibble, uh, it's actually in a cave you can access quite early in the game, but you can't access the part with Gibble until you have strength, which is much later. So by the time you get Gibble, it's quite underleveled, it's in the slow experience group, so it takes a lot of experience to level, and it doesn't achieve its full Garchomp potential until level 48, which is very late. So unfortunately, I am going to put it in, I'm going to say C. Uh, this is a very, very heavy investment Pokemon. It takes a lot of resources to get it up to the point where it actually contributes. But obviously, once you actually get it to Garchomp, yeah, game's over. It's really strong. Munchlax. This goes in the honey tier with, like, a special mention because Tree Munchlax is one of the most absurd Pokemon to catch that they've ever implemented. Like, I believe there's a whole website completely dedicated to just, like, honey tree manipulation, um, a large part of which goes towards trying to catch tree munchlax. Uh, J. Rose mentioned the absurdity of this in his, I think, one of his Gen 4 catch em -alls, and there's no way I could do justice to the way he described this, so I'm just gonna play a clip from that uh, to let you know how absurd Tree Munchlax is. The final tip I can give you is just to be patient. Six hours seems like a mind-numbingly long time to wait for one Pokemon, you think? But you can manage at least three slatherings a day. Uh, I don't stay up for 18 hours, but okay, maybe. And three slatherings of all the trees in the game, well, we can't do that, so let's skip to the end. The inevitable subset of 12 Munchlax tree encounters every day, if considerably slower, will be quite likely to end up getting you a Munchlax within a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Sooner if you're lucky. Yeah, you're not catching this. If you could, uh, Munchlax, even its, in its baby form, is actually kind of strong, and Snorlax is also really strong. I'd probably end up putting them both in, like, B, maybe. Unknown. Riolu. So Riolu is on paper very strong. Unfortunately, you get it as like a baby on like Iron Island, which is really late in the game. What? At which point you have to invest a ton of resources. It's also a friendship evolution, which is obnoxious to get it up to Lucario. Lucario is pretty good, but I think this actually is just a D tier Pokemon just because it's like unusable when you get it and it takes so much work to get it up to the point of usability and it's it's not like it's Garchomp, it's, it's real who's and Lucario still look good, but I think it goes in D. Wooper! It's a water ground type. That's pretty good. Mediocre stats, that's not very good. I think we're just gonna put it with the Barboach. They're basically the same. Uh, except for the fact that Quagsire is a little bit cuter. Wingle. For whatever reason, available fairly late, water flying, becomes a decent HM slave, but you've already had Bidoof carrying the team by this point. It's whatever. I don't think it's a D, but uh, I think it is like a uh, a low C. It's about where it fits, because it doesn't really do much aside from HM utility. It is a uh, defensively leaning Pokemon, but at least it's a water type. Hey, that's nice. Girafferig. Pretty mediocre. Available like mid to late game, normal psychic type with like okay moves. Is that really what you're looking for? It's not a D. We'll put it like here ish. Because it's like kind of usable from when you catch it. Yeah. Hippopotus. Really weird like catching conditions. It's in this one like cave with I think he's called the Ruin Maniac. And basically it's like a tiny chamber and there's a 5% encounter rate. But as you catch more unknown, the chamber expands and the catch rate for Hippopotus goes up. Now, 5% encounter rate is low, but it's still like 
possible. So I don't really think you need to go through the trouble of catching uh, all those extra unknown if your only aim is to get a Hippopotas. Is, Hippo is Hippopotas any good? Eh. It's okay. Um, I'll probably end up putting it in C. Uh, it's got good attack and a stab earthquake, so that's good. But, I mean, it's pretty slow. And, unfortunately, sand is mostly a detriment. Right, because uh, it stays on the field, and it's probably going to end up hurting a lot of your team. It also takes forever, because like at the end of each turn, uh, the enemy is buffeted, and then you're buffeted. It's a whole buffet of buffeting. It just takes a long time. Uh, just a fun fact, though, about weather effects. Um, at the end of turn, they strike the faster Pokemon first. So if both of you, bo like if both you and your opponent send in a Pokemon, uh, and your opponent gets hit first, you know that they're faster. Uh, that's, that's cool. Doesn't really matter for a game. Meryl. Finally, Meryl is getting to shine. Almost. I'm going to put this in high B. Alongside Meditite. So it's available like mid-game. And what makes it like good is that it has the ability, huge power, which doubles its attack stat, which you can now use with its water moves because of the physical special split. So if you want a Pokemon just using really strong water moves... Use Gyarados. But you could also use Meryl and Azumarill. Uh, fairy typing coming soon, and then we're gonna be getting to S, boys. Uh, if this was available like earlier, it'd probably actually be A. Scorpy. It's a Great Marsh exclusive. And uh, great is not the adjective I would use. I hate the Great Marsh. It's like the Safari Zone, but with extra elements of randomness and waiting. Doesn't that sound fun? No? Yeah, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Scorpy itself is fine. If you could just catch it in the grass, I'd probably put it in, like, high C, maybe. Uh, I don't think it's so bad that it goes in D, but it's not great at all. And just, like, the hassle of having to go through the Great Marsh knocks it down a few pegs. If you're not clear on how the Great, great Marsh works, so it's basically the Safari Zone, but what Pokemon appear in what which areas changes based on the time of day and just, like, randomness. So to know who's actually where and when, you have to go like outside this far zone to like this observation deck and you gotta pay like a hundred poke dollars to use some binoculars that will then show you one Pokemon that's available in an area for like a moment it flashes on the screen. It's really obnoxious. Crowagunk. This is not quite a Great Marsh exclusive. I think you can catch it outside of the Great Marsh, but I believe the Great Marsh is the first time you encounter this. I could be wrong on that. Uh, anyway, this thing is not great. It's got okay-ish stats once it evolves, but it actually takes a little while to evolve. The dry screen ability is great. Uh, it's basically better than immunity to water because water attacks actually heal you. It also makes it weak to fire, so just watch out for that. Uh, I think I'll put it next to Scorpy. I'm honestly not too sure on where this should go, but I think they can just hang out here, be like poison buddies. Carnivine. Shockingly bad. You'd think that a single stage Pokemon would have, you know, like a good stat, and its attack is like barely okay. It's super slow. It's like a pure grass type. Like this thing is just bad. Like, why would you ever use this dollar store victory bell? And it's a great marsh exclusive. Is it a D? Put it at the bottom of C. I wouldn't use this thing. Remoraid. The C is looking a bit lonely. We can put him right there. It's an alright water type. Eh. Would you look at that? We're really filling out our uh, our fish tank here. Finion and Luminion. It's a mediocre water type. But hey, it's a water type. Tentacool. I've defended Tentacool in the past, uh, quite passionately. But not this time, mostly because it's just not available until the very end of the game, at which point you have better things to do. Uh, so unfortunately, he will be taking a swim in the C tier this time. Unlike Feebas, Feebas goes in D, because you're not catching Feebas. I don't know why it's tradition to make Feebas just obnoxious to capture, but this time, it's just like the basement of Mount Coronet. It's like a 50% chance in one of the tiles, and it resets every day. So you're going to be spending all day fishing to maybe catch it, and if you don't, you're going to have to redo the entire process tomorrow. Horrifying. Why did they do this? 
And if you go through the work of catching it, and eventually evolving it to Milotic, good luck with that, by the way, because you have to feed it, like, Poffins. And to make good Poffins, you need multiple people, because there are no longer NPCs to help you make them. Why did they do this? You do all that, you evolve it up to Milotic, and you end up with Dollar Store Gyarados. What a ripoff. Mantike, available really late game, specially defensive. But hey, at least it's a water type. See it there. Snover, thanks, Snobama. Saved from D tier by its really good dual stabs. So Snover is available quite late. Unfortunately, sets up a hail which will almost certainly be damaging your team. Unless the rest of your team is also ice types. Like, how would that even be possible? Where are the ice types? And if you are using a team of ice types, like, clearly, <laughs> you don't care about viability because ice sucks. Uh, but hey, you can at least smash things with stab wood hammer, 120 base power, or a never miss stab blizzard because it's hailing. We'll put him in C. Sneasel and Weavile, unfortunately held back by its availability. Because Sneasel on paper is really good, really fast, really strong, great dual stabs, uh, and with Weavile everything gets even better. Unfortunately, you don't get Sneasel until almost the end of the game, and you can't evolve up into Weavile until even later. So it just doesn't have that much time to shine. That being said, I don't think it goes in D, I'm just going to put it uh, slightly above Snover, because I do think it is better than Snover. Uh, I just really wish you could get it earlier. The Lake Trio. We got Uxi, Mesprit, and Azelf. I'm going to start with the best one, which is Azelf. I think Azelf actually goes in B, despite its late availability, because it's basically just like a free, really strong Pokemon that can maybe help you finish the game if your team is like a little bit on the weak side. There's no cost to using it. You just pick it up, it's ready to go, it's really strong. Mesprit is just bad. Azelf, stats-wise, it's uh, gotten more balanced stats, which is not what you want. You want to be offensive like Azelf. And it's also a roaming Pokemon, which is completely obnoxious, and it means you're probably not going to catch it, which means D. And Uxi. Uxi is basically bad Mesprit, except you can actually catch it. <laughs> so for that reason, I think we're just going to put it in C. Its stats are good enough that it's not like a complete loser like these dudes. But I wouldn't use it. And finally, the cover legendaries. Dialga and Palkia, masters of time and space, also masters of low A tier. So for the same reason that Azelf is in B, Dialga and Palkia are both going to be in A, just because it's a story encounter, you, you are going to encounter them. They're completely free, and they're both really, really strong, so they can carry you through the last part of, part of the game at basically no cost to you. It's a freebie. And they're also just really cool. Uh, so, fun fact, why are they named Dialga and Palkia? It's because that's based on the games we're playing, Diamond and Pearl. And you might be saying, like, what? Dialga doesn't sound anything like Diamond, and especially Palkia doesn't sound anything like Pearl. You fool. It's because you thought Diamond and Pearl were English words, when they're not. It's because we're playing Pocketto Monster, Diamondo, Dialga, Pocketto Monster, Pearl, Parkia, Daipakizni, Ekoare. And I think that's about it for this tier list. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully it wasn't too long based on my uh, OBS recording here. It looks like it's going to be about an hour and 15 minutes or so. Um, I appreciate the support. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if there's any changes you'd make to this that don't involve the Platinum decks. Because remember, this is a Diamond and Pearl tier list. Do not tell me about Platinum availability. I don't want to hear it. But if I made any mistakes concerning like diamond and pearl availability please do let me know thanks for watching uh, this has been imported cheese and i hope to see you in the next video take care